further three digits. The theoretical mastermind, as I said, was Chrysanthos Karamalis of Manitos. He was born in the late 18th century and he was active in the Sinaitic Metochian, as I said. Around the time of the reform, he was a deacon, probably at the Patriarchate, I'm assuming. And then shortly after, in 1815 or 1816, he became an archimandrite. And in 1820, Archbishop of the Reichen, then he was moved to Archbishop of Smyrna, and finally Archbishop of Prussia. He was highly educated, he, was, he, he knew Greek and French. He was expert in Northwestern and Eastern music, a composer and intellectual man. Very uh, uh, significant uh, talent there combined. So the, uh, the output of his musical production, what he's mostly known for, is his theoretical uh, publications. One of them on the left, the introduction to the theory and practice of ecclesiastical music, which was published in Paris by the, the student uh, I mentioned be before, Anastasio Stamilis. And in 1832, the uh, printed publication of his great theory textbook uh, in Trieste. Um, it took 200 years until those seminal publications for the Sartical Chant were translated into English. One of them, uh, the great theory, actually have it here. The, this textbook was published in 2010 in the United States. And um, I think it was only last year or the year before that the introduction uh, of the music was translated and published by um, uh, Father Constantine Terzopoulos uh, in English. Uh, Christopher died in 1846. On his grave, a uh, poem was, um, an epitaph was written by a famous um, poet of the time, uh, Elias Tandaliris. Um, you can find it, uh, it, it says nice things that, about Christopher that he actually made the music accessible and now everyone can praise God with his uh, new method. Um, the other person of the, uh, of the reform was Gregorius. Gregorius uh, is known as Gregorius Levitis or Levitis because his, his dad was a priest, a Levitis, so, so the people were calling him Levitis. Uh, later on, uh, became known as Gregorius Protopsatis, as it was common at the time, uh, his rank being the most prestigious of the ecclesiastical musicians. Um, his parents, Georgios and Helen, uh, legend has it that he was born the day that Petrus the Peloponnesian passed away in, 18, in 1777 or 78. Um, Gregorius, when he was young, he was drawn to the Armenian uh, community and he learned the Armenian language by himself. He learned the Armenian music by himself. So his parents were worried uh, and they said, uh, we're going to put you in the Sinaitic Metochion and you're going to learn the Greek thing. The Greek literature as well, and so they did. So they, they took him there, and uh, a, um, a very gifted uh, teacher there called Jeremias at the Sinaitic Metodium taught Gregorius the chanting and the, the church letters, as we uh, call them. And uh, Gregorius soon became a reader and a chanter. Uh, it didn't take too long until Gregorius was a student of the most prominent chanters of the time. Uh, the Jacob was the of Salvus of the Patriarchate, Petrus Vizandius, the successor of the Archimus, and Iorios of Crete, as I mentioned before. In a very brief time, he only uh, passed away, as I mentioned, he passed away in 1821. He was only 43, 45 years old, a very short lifetime. However, his musical output was spectacular. He transcribed 20 volumes of um, old compositions, he composed heaps and heaps of new, st of new uh, pieces, and, and also um, 30 seconds. So, third person of the reform, Hormuzius. Hormuzius was just a chanter at the time. He was not an archimandrite, he was not the protopsalist of the great church, not even the left chanter. He was just a chanter. However, Hormuzius was a genius. He was a musical genius. Perhaps, I mean, it's really difficult to compare these things. But he was, he was born on the Isle of Halki. He was a student of Iacobus Protopsalis and Georgius of Crete, at the same time as Gregorius. So you can just picture Gregorius and Hormuzius studying together at the time and thinking, we can do this better, we can collaborate on this. Uh, he's, um, he became a master of the old method. He's, there's a lot of man, there, there are manuscripts of Hormuzius that he actually wrote in the old method. He became a master of a secular music, which the ecclesiastical musicians called external music. He also played the name, like Chrysanthus, and uh, he chanted at various churches. 
And in 1818, the Patriarch took in recognition of his contribution, bestowed upon him the rank of Hartophilax. Hartophilax was a very prestigious rank in Byzantine times, um, but it was an honorary um, title in 1818. They also gave him 10,000 coins of the time in recognition as, a, as an award for teaching as well at the school. Um, so, in his lifetime, Kurmuzio spent 50 whole years of music production in teaching, in writing manuscripts, writing, publishing books, 18 years transcribing all the manuscripts, all up 70 volumes of codices. For all that work, Kurmuzio sometimes is known as Harkenderos. Harkenderos literally means bronze guts. It's like he was so tough, he was so determined to do that, that work. And um, as it happens sometimes with these things, he died penniless in his hometown of Halki.